I want to talk about something that I am really excited about and is seeing a little bit more uptake in the industry, and that's architecture decision records. I've heard a little bit about that. It's a really compelling concept, so let's get into it. So I think what happens a lot of the time is, is people will build out their first version of the application, they'll, they'll move around, maybe move on to a new project, and a lot of the history uh, around the decision-making process is lost. Why did you pick this architecture over another architecture? Why did you build out uh, this part of the application and not the other part of the application? And understanding really, you, you know, what the concerns and the things that were rejected mm -hmm. were can give you so much context when you're coming into a project. And I think that's one of the things at Kalent that we can do as well, is, is we can kind of give you give people the context around why certain decisions are made and what controls you have there. For sure, that makes sense. And like a lot of times you'll see that as tribal knowledge in an organization, right? I know to go walk down the hallway and knock on Connie's door for why she made that decision on the architecture and understand it a little bit better. But with the, with the sort of great resignation, if you will, people are shifting jobs and maybe that tribal knowledge is now sort of leaking out of the organization or an auditor is coming back to ask why a decision was made and, and how this in encryption or security decision was made and implemented. That's something that they could do as an archival process as well, it sounds like. Yeah, and I think the best way to do it is to almost have it live alongside your code. It can just be a plain text document. And maybe it has links, you know, to some of the other resources and things. But if it lives alongside your infrastructure as code, your Terraform, your CDK, or your CloudFormation, and it just records the reasoning behind uh, the decisions that you've made over years and years, mm -hmm. that accumulated history is incredibly valuable for educational purposes, for understanding how your application operates, and it prevents a lot of the redundant work that people will do. It also sounds sort of seamless to a normal development process, right? So you might have a peer review process where you're taking a look at the code, an e easy part of that is like, where's the decision record for this? Where, where's the context for it? And we can make sure that that's committed along with the feature. So it doesn't sound like it, like it's not adding anything to really to the development team other than to help that next person that needs to take it on and understand how decisions were made and, and what the history of the feature or the, the platform might be. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving these. I, I'm looking forward to seeing this in more repos. Yeah, for sure. And it also is like to, it's a great handoff for, for maybe a vendor like Kalent coming on board or a vendor like Kalent handing off back to a client team, making sure that we've captured all of those decisions so that their team can run with it. So wherever there's a handoff, it feels like it could be a valuable artifact for the next team to take on that, that and project. It lets people understand the why and not just the how.